Hello folks, welcome to the Edupedia world and I am Abhinay Gupta. Today again we will continue with the topic, the appointment and qualification of directors. Right? And in our previous lectures we have already seen the appointment of various directors like the additional director, alternate director, filling up the casual vacancy, appointment of an independent director and all sorts of appointment. Right? But today what we will be touching upon, the topic that we will be covering today would be the appointment of directors by the central government and this provision will not be covered by Companies Act 2013 but that will be co covered by Companies Act 1956 right which is section 408 of Companies Act 1956 and as per the amendment so far this section will continue to be applicable for at least your May 2016 examination right and that that is an update so far because no other provision from Companies Act 2013 have yet been notified for this purpose for your examination so, let us start with uh, section, section 408, Companies Act 1956, appointment of directors by the central government. So, section 408, the directors who are appointed under section 408 will be considered to be the nominee directors, the nominees of the central government. But CG would appoint such a director only if an order has been made by the company law board. So, CLB. So, basically if we see, then over here the power is entrusted upon the central government as well as the uh, company law board combined. So none of them can uh, individually appoint a director into the company. So central government nominates a director, CLB will make an inquiry and then if it gives its approval to go ahead, then CG will appoint a director. So the entire act of inquiry and feasibility study will be done by the company law board, but it will be instigated by the central government and finally concluded by the central government again. The company law board has no suo moto power to make an inquiry or to pass any order. They can do so only if they have an application made. And that application would be made either by the central government or 100 members of the company. Minimum 100 members of the company. So 100 or more members can make an application to the company law board to appoint a nominee director. right? And the members with not less than one tenth of the voting power of the company can also make such an application. So these three uh, entities to be very specific, these three people, the central government, 100 members or more, or members with not less than 10 voting power. These three are actually given the power to make a reference, to make an application to the company law board. And then the company law board would make an inquiry and pass an order if it is satisfied. That is the procedure of how it goes, right? So over here when we talk about the power of central government to make the reference, then we would notice that the power of central government is mere an administrative power. And the only requirement for the central government to make this reference is the presence of any reasonable and convincing material before the central government for making the reference. If they have any reasonable and convincing material for reference, they can make a reference to the CLB. Which means that possession of a sufficient evidence as to the gross mismanagement or operation is not required. If there is any reasonable or convincing material that the CG thinks deem fit to make an application to CLB, they could do so, right? You don't need an evidence for that. Now when we talk about passing an order is satisfied, then there are some essential conditions that needs to be present for passing the order, right? So what are those conditions? First is the affairs of the company are being conducted in a manner which is prejudicial to any member of the company or the interest of the company or public interest right so if the affairs of company are prejudicial to any uh, public interest or the interest of the company then that would be a condition for CLB to pass an order right the other condition would be if it deems fit that they have to appoint a director so as to prevent the current state of affairs of the company or to effectively safeguard the interest of the members of the company or the public interest if they think that they need a director to do that, they would pass an order. The appointment would be done by CG, right? And when we talk about satisfaction, when we say that the CLB needs to be satisfied to pass that order, that means that the mere opinion, mere, mere formation of an opinion would not be enough. They will have to be satisfied. And what would satisfy them? They would be satisfied with sufficient evidence and proof, right? That would ordinarily satisfy uh, an un prejudiced mind, right? So that would be equated with satisfaction. 
And the other thing that we need to note over here is that the company would receive no opportunity of being heard. Right? They would not go and ask the company whether we should or we should not appoint a director for you. No. They would just go ahead and do the procedures. Right? Company would not have any say in this matter. So on the completion of the inquiry, if it, is, uh, if it is satisfied and we know if the conditions are present, the company law board may pass the order. Now what are the orders that it can pass? Right? The orders can basically be of two types. One is to appoint a director by central government. So CLB may forward the order to the central government to appoint a director into the board of the company right? for any of the conditions that we have seen, the preconditions that have to be there. And this director would be appointed, this nominee director would be appointed for a maximum period of three years, right? And the period would actually be specified by the CLB when it gives its order. Whether they want a director for one year, for two years, or for three years, that is the max, right? And this director can again be reappointed, right? Or the appointment can be extended actually for a period of other three years to the max if the same conditions are still persisting. Because if the central government and CLB are of the opinion that even in the three year period nothing much has changed but still they see an option, they see the progress and they can assume that yeah something more will change if they give them some more time, the maximum three years period more can be awarded. right? And the second thing is if they don't uh, want CG to appoint the director, they could also, they would also order an appointment by means of proportional representation. We have already had a entire lecture dedicated to this point, the proportional representation, and we have seen how proportional representation takes place. And what is the purpose of proportional representation? So that the interest of the minority, the sufficient, significant minority is also saved. Right? We have seen that proportional representation would actually give the power to all the directors, the majority as well as the minority, to elect their representative. It's a fair poll, it's a fair election. Right? And we have seen the two various methods already in detail, that is the STV and the cumulative voting. Right? But we know that proportional representation can be made only if it is provided in the article of the company. So if it is provided in the article of the company, it is very easy to do that. And if it is not provided, we will first have to f uh, pass a resolution to amend the article. So once the article is amended, they could uh, like step forward with proportional representation. But we also know that proportional representation would need a significant amount of time to be conducted. So in the meantime, they could order the central government to appoint some additional directors who would take care of the office until the directors by means of prop uh, proportional representation are uh, appointed and they take over the position in the board. So until that is done, CG would appoint some additional director to take their position and discharge their duties. Now we would look at the provisions that are applicable to the nominee directors or to say the status of nominee director. So nominee directors would not be included in the total number of directors. Hence, if they are not included in total number of directors, they will not also be rotational directors. So they can be removed by the central government only. Right? And they can al they'll also be maintained. Their work will be supervised by the central government. Right? They would have to report to the central government. The entire monitoring will be done by the central government. Right? And last but not the least, that central government would fill up the casual vacancy that occurs in the place of a nominee director. So when a uh, office of a nominee director stands vacant due to a casual vacancy, the power will not be given to the board to fill up the casual vacancy. It would stand with the central government only. And when we have seen that during proportional representation, since that procedure takes time, so during that procedure, CG would appoint some additional director to take over the board. Uh, sorry, to be a part of the board, not take over, to be a part of the board and take over and discharge the duties that would be discharged by those directors that will be appointed by proportional representation. So there is one more provision for the same that when these additional directors are appointed, the board cannot make any change in the board of directors. Right? Until and un uh, so far as these additional directors are in office. But still, if there is any situation where there is very much necessity that arises, a necessity arises that you need to uh, have some change in the board of director, you, need, you would need the approval of the CLB. So company law board would be the only body that could approve the change in the board of directors when the additional directors are still in the office. Then when the entire procedure is being undertaken, the central government also has the power to issue some directions to the company. 
So what are they? They could ask the company to change the existing auditor. They would ask the company to retire the existing auditor, to remove the existing auditor, and then appoint the other auditor, a new auditor, in their place, right? The second thing is they would also uh, requ uh, require the company to alter their article as per the requirement of CG. So CG would require some provisions to be included in the article and that would be done and followed. And CG could also uh, provide for some other directions as it deems fit from time to time. Right? And these directions would automatically come into effect when the company follows the provision, when they complete the provision of alteration. They would need no further approval or they do not need any further formalities to be done. If there is something to be amended in the article, then amendment of the same would be the compliance of the provisions. If the auditor needs to be changed, then removal and then appointment of the new auditor would be sufficient compliance of the provision. They do not need to have any further approval or any other procedures to be followed. Now in this section, section 408, there is one more thing that we need to understand. Right? We have already covered the provisions of this section, but there is one thing that we need to understand, which is that the central government does not take over the management. Right? They don't have an overriding power. The additional directors that are appointed by the central government or the nominee directors appointed by the central government, they don't have an overriding power. Right? We need to understand that the board of directors of the company are still oper operational. They will perform their functions and duties as they used to do. We only have some additional directors in the board. We have a nominee director who can put a check right, and who will just report to the central government. They will not take over the management. The central government will not interfere as to the day-to-day -day management of the company. Right? That is an important point that you need to understand and realize over here. Right? Now we move on to the next section that is section 161 subsection 3 which deals with the appointment of directors by the third party. So, so far we have seen all the provisions of appointment of alternate director, additional director, independent director, filling of casual vacancy and appointment of director by company law board and the central government. Now we will see the last part of appointment that is appointment of a director by third party. Who are these third party basically? These are the lenders, the financial institutions, the bank or anybody like that. Right? And why do they appoint a director? And what are those directors called? Those directors would be called nominee directors again. Right? And we know that they will not be included in the total number of directorship. Right? And these directors are basically appointed to ensure the compliance of the legal requirements by the borrower. Because when the borrower has taken loan or taken any financial assistance, from the financial institution or the bank, there have been a contract, there have been an agreement, right? And this nominee director would stay in the company when the loan is actually very big to see that the compliance of the legal requirements by the borrower are being done from time to time. So the nominee directors are the watchdog, right? They are watchdog of the financial institution to safeguard their funds in the assisted company. So actually the directors are appointed by the board of directors itself but they are being appointed on the nominations filed by the financial institution or the bank. They would file the nomination of few directors and among them the board of directors will have to elect somebody to be a nominee director of that financial institution or the bank. Right? And this power can be, in, uh, can be taken ahead by the board of directors, like they can utilize this power only if the article of association of the company provides for the same. Otherwise they will have to first amend the article and then abide by these provisions. Right? Then we also have a question that have appeared very recently in your CA final November 2014 attempt. We will discuss that and close the topic over here today. So as per the question brought forward by the CA Institute and CA final November 2014 examination, right? Uh, the issue was that the nominee director was appointed by the board of director but nothing of that sort was provided in the article of association. Neither did they have any agreement among them, between themselves. Right? So we already know that this is not possible. Right? Uh, why is it not possible? Because first, they have no agreement between them for appointment of director. Second, there is nothing provided in the act regarding the appointment of a nominee director. And third, even the article of association does not allow the same. So all the three conditions are against and hence you will not be allowed to attend the nominee uh, appoint the nominee director. And if you have done so, then that would be invalid. Right? So that will not be valid and the director will have to be removed. So that will be all about this topic today. We have covered two sections, right? That is section 408 of Companies Act 1956 about the appointment of director by the central government and the CLB. 
And then we have covered section 161 subsection 3 the appointment of directors by the third party. We have also discussed the questions over there and that will be all for the day today. Right? Stay tuned for the next lecture and the continuing topic.